you see people that don't open their Bible, they start quoting what the Bible says. <laughs> they don't open it. And that is, the Papa will say, from such, turn away from them. They are children. I remember one that was saying that, um, he said, uh, as a pastor, you're not supposed to be behaving the way. I said, where is it in the Bible? He said, I may not open the Bible, but at least I know it's somewhere in the Bible. I said, <laughs> praise the Lord. And I said to him, don't say what you don't know where it is in the Bible. The training, the word of God, is your point of reference. If you don't locate where it is, don't use it. Amen? Because there are so many things that people said. People said. Remember when they said that three wise men came to see Jesus? Remember? Was it like that in the Bible? No, there was never three wise men that came to see Jesus. And even in primary school, they teach it. Three wise men. Amen. The, only Bible, the Bible only says wise men. Where did they get the idea of three wise men? Are you hearing me? And there are many things like that. Many such nonsense that people brand as the word of God. Meanwhile, it is not in the word of God. When Satan said to Eve, did God say you should not touch the fruit? Is that what God said? That's not what God said. The Satan will always try to manipulate the word of God that it will sound as if it is true. And if you look at it without checking, you think it's true. Uh, he said to Eve, did God say you truly should not touch the God never said such thing. God said don't eat. God didn't say don't touch. Amen. And so this training, you are equipping, is thorough. That's why Paul said, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning spiritual things. I do not want you to be ignorant concerning service in the kingdom of God. I don't want you to be ignorant. I want you to be informed. Yesterday, I took an example, like respect. Amen? Amen. We saw from the book of Leviticus, the Bible says, when an elder comes and you get up to greet the elder. Did we not read it? Yes. Has anybody told you that before? And then people say, uh, why do they have to worship pastor? When pastor goes, everybody will get up. The Bible says in Leviticus, in the book of Leviticus, when an elder comes in, you should stand up. Amen? Is that not what we read? Yes. And you saw it written in the word of God. And the Bible also says, never expose the nakedness of your father. That's what the Bible says. You know what it says? And so when you begin to talk about your pastor in a negative way, or your leader in a very negative way, what are you doing? And Paul said to Timothy, never speak to an elder harshly. Is that not the word of God? So what do you do? You pattern yourself according to the word. He said, don't speak to your pastor. Don't speak. A, he said, do not expose the nakedness of your father. That's what God said. He said, do not expose the nakedness of your father. It's not your own. When Moses made a mistake, and Aaron, not a mistake, he married an African, and they were angry. Miriam and, Moses and Aaron were angry. And God got angry with them. Remember that Aaron seniors Moses. Miriam um, seniors Moses, isn't it? So they were the senior of Moses. Remember what I told you about elders. Elders are not only by age. Because the Bible says those that are elderly and those that are aged. Remember yesterday we read the scripture in uh, 1 Timothy, right? He said those that were elderly and those that are aged. Now, they were aged over Moses. But Moses was elderly in the spirit. And because... Aaron was a priest, Miriam was a prophetess, and Moses was a what? A man of God, right? And so when we now talked about Miriam and Aaron and Moses, we don't talk about the biological part of it. We talk about the spiritual part of it. And the moment you come under the spirit, it dissolves the physical. And so automatically, Moses became the elder of the two of his seniors in the spirit. And God established that. And when they talked against Moses, God was angry. God said, are you not afraid to talk about another man's servant? 
Right there, Miriam got leprosy. You know what Aaron did? Aaron bowed his knees. He said, my Lord Moses. He called his Ginobra, my Lord. Amen. Amen. And some of you, you open your mouth, you say, you are not my God. There are people that are created to be your God. Make no mistake. God said to Moses, I have made you God over Pharaoh. You don't, don't open your mouth in something that will destroy you. There are people that your destiny, your destiny is in their hand because God has ordered it like that. God put the destiny of Israel in the days of Goliath in the hand of who? David. For 40 days, Goliath stood before Israel and pounded them and said, who can come and stand against me? Who can come and stand before me? Until a shepherd boy came and brought down Goliath. There is no destiny without a Goliath. I've told you that. And it is only, I told you, I told you this morning that grace, grace is where your ability stops. Grace is God's ability at work in you, right? And that's why I say when people say, by the grace of God, they will come to church, they are lying. Just believe they won't come. You don't need the grace of God to come to church. Your ability can bring you to church if you want to come. You don't need the grace of God to go to uh, work, do you? When you have an appointment, you don't need grace. You dress up and you go. If you want to come to church, what do you do? Dress up and come to church. Every Christian already has a grace to come to church because God has commanded us to come to church. So to say, by the grace of God, I will come to church, you are not willing to come. You don't want to come. Shout hallelujah. And so in many things, because we are not taught, we are like children. We are tossed about and blown about by every wind of new teaching. Amen? Amen. We are tricked by the lies of the enemy. I remember, <laughs> I remember one story I was told about in Ghana. This big church will invite this pastor to come and teach in their church. He will come to their church. He will teach in this church. This place is invited that tithing is unscriptural. He will teach it in that church. <laughs> he will go to his church. He will teach that tithing is scriptural. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And both of them he brought from the Bible. To one, he says, tithing is Old Testament unscriptural. And the people there will make notes. And then he goes to his own church. He tells them you should pay your tithe. Because God needs it to build his church. What was he doing? Deception. He was bringing down to that church. Because they were in the same city. Because they were in the same city. Amen. When, the, when Jesus said to us. In Matthew 7. Ask. Seek, knock. He didn't say what you will find. You will find whatever you are looking for. You know why? The devil is a manufacturer. God is a creator. Amen. Amen. A manufacturer uses raw material. A creator uses nothing. Praise the Lord. Ex nihilo. What is ex nihilo? I taught you. I taught you what ex nihilo is. What is it? Creativity out of nothing. But devil will never create out of nothing. He doesn't have that ability. He doesn't have that grace. He doesn't have it. But God is able to create anything out of nothing. So devil is a manufacturer. When you are seeking for something, he will manufacture it for you. When you are asking for something, you know, I've seen people that went into prolonged fasting, asking for God to speak to them, speak to them, speak to them. And they fasted until the devil gave them a voice that started speaking to them. We had a guy in Munich that came to church. He said he kept hearing voices. A German, not an African. One time in church, we were on second floor in Target. After service, this guy was banging his head on the window that this, the devil is, somebody is asking him to jump. I 
I pray you, don't let anything. Don't let your education take you away from God. Don't let the job take you away. Don't let your husband, don't let your wife take you away. Don't let the children. Ah, some people worship their children that God gave to them. They worship them. They adore their children. Some people adore their husband. Some people adore their wife. Listen, love your children, love your family, but love God more because at the end of the day, their destiny is in the hand of God. Amen. You can give them good education does not mean that they, no, it does not mean that they will be able to make it. But God can make them make it. Praise the Lord. And so when the Bible says, love God, love God, love God, like Moses said, he said that it may be well with you. I had a story uh, on something that just happened recently. A, a, a lady was kidnapped, I think, yeah, in this nation. A lady was kidnapped. And the mother was told, the mother was told that your daughter has been kidnapped. The mother started laughing. She came to a church. He said, Lord, they don't carry your picking. She was dedicated on this altar to you. To you. And they carried her. Lord, they carried your picking. Bring her back. Bring her back. Your daughter dedicated on this altar. And whoever carried her carried your own. And so you have to bring her back. And I heard that those that carried her, as they were deaf, and they said, this one said we are carrying. What will you do with her? Huh? Said this one is bad market. They stopped the vehicle and pushed her out of the vehicle. They said she's bad market. Because your God goes ahead of the kidnappers. Amen. That was, that was a woman with wisdom. She remembered that the name of the Lord is upon the daughter. He said the daughter was dedicated upon this altar. He said, God, not my picking, it's your picking. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I wish many more fathers, mothers, would talk like that confidently. Confident about their children. <laughs> oh. The reason why many struggle to love the Lord is because you've not seen the wonders of God. You've not seen the wonders of God. If you will experience if you will experience one encounter of the Lord, if you will get God to act for you just one time, one time, one time, it will shock you. If you come to a place where you move God into action on your behalf, just in one circumstances, you will know that truly God is a wonder-working God. You have not dared God. That's the problem. You have not dared Jehovah. Where you said, I don't care. Esther said, if I perish, I perish, but I'm going forward. The three Hebrew children said, even though they throw us into the fire, we will not bow before their God. You have not come to that place. Daniel said, let them throw me into the lion den. I will stand for Jehovah. You have not come to that point. That's where the problem is. And that's why Moses is saying to them, he said, listen, listen. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. He said, your destiny is in loving God. Your future, your prosperity, your increase is in how you love the Lord. You know why we pray so long? Because we are trying first to please God with all our lawlessness. And so we pray long, we fast long. Any child that is obedient to the father, to the mother, doesn't need to ask much. Before even he asks, it is given. True or false? Except the wicked parents. No, that is the truth. That is the truth. He wanted to jump from two-story building. After service, a German. You go into prolonged fasting, you will enjoy yourself. And many of you, for what does not need fasting, you will proclaim a fast. In this training, we will get to that area, the right kind of fast. Praise the Lord. But all this, I'm trying to let you know that to be trained is to stop you from acting like a child. 
To be trained is to stop you from acting as a baby. To be trained is to make you be profitable in the body of Christ. I want to read something here that will shock you. Praise the Lord. He says, in the same verse 14, we won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. Is that in your Bible? He says, we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so cleverly they sound like the truth, right? Verse 15, he says, instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. Growing more and more what? Like, so training gets us growing. The right training gets us to be what? Built up. Amen? Who is the head of his body, the church? Verse 16. This verse 16 is the least understood verse in the whole chapter. And I will tell you why. He says, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part, as what? Each part does its own special work. Is that in your Bible? He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. How? By each part doing its own special work. It helps the other part grow. You are doing your own part, helps the other part to grow, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So, if every part have a role to play in the growth of the body of Christ, by the equipping you receive, by the equipping you receive, what happens when you are not equipped? And so you don't contribute anything. So you don't bring anything. No Christian was saved to be idle because that will make a waste of the blood of Jesus. No Christian was saved to be an observer. Amen? Amen. We are meant, we are meant to supply something to the body. We are meant to bring something to the body of Christ. And it helps, what you bring helps another part to grow. Amen. Amen. Whatever gift, whatever talent you bring, it helps somebody else part. It complements somebody else part. Praise the Lord. If you drive, you see the gear. You need to engage the gear, the gear for the car to move, right? Praise the Lord. Can you engage the gear on its own? You cannot, right? What do you need to do? Sorry, what do you need to do? Now, I'm not wait, no, some of you don't know. Okay, I understand. You need to clutch, right? When you clutch, it makes the gear to be able to do its job, isn't it? And so, when you clutch, and then you enter the gear, and you do something else, you pedal the throttle. And so, clutching enables the gear, the gear enables the throttle, and the throttle enables the car to move. And so, one doing its own part. If the car is not able to enter into gear, no matter how much you press the throttle, it will not move. True or false? That is the truth. The, the gear, if you put it in the gear and the clutch is flat, will the car go anywhere? Why? One member is failing. One member is what? Failing. And that is an example. That is an example of the way we're supposed to be in the body. Cure this part, supposed to make if, uh, the first part to, to fulfill. The first part is supposed to make micro part to be fulfilled. Micro part is supposed to make bright part to be fulfilled. 
work connecting to the other, working together. And so we come into the unity. And when one fails, if you can cover, you cover. Are you hearing me? Yes. When God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, he was telling us the truth. Because God only speaks the truth. If we can get the understanding of the body of Christ and the function properly, if we can get it properly, our prayer time will be very short. Many pastors, many pastors, we are praying more than the prayer Jesus prayed when he was on earth. Yes, you can read through the prayer life of Jesus. Is it not? How many of us have his results? But there was something that Jesus said when you read the scriptures. If you read John chapter 14, John chapter 15, Jesus said something, he said, he said, I always please my father. And my father is always with me. That's what Jesus said. Pleasing the father is not by prayer. Remember what I told you, faith is an faith is an faith is an and I told you on Sunday, love is what? Love is what? Love is what? If we love the Father and we please the Father, our prayer time, prayer life will reduce. You know, when this, secret, when this revelation first dawned on me, Jesus said, the Father is always with me. He that sent me is always with me. Because I please him always. The next thing I was praying, I said, Lord, if this is the secret, the secret of God being with us always is not by prayer. Lord, be with me. Lord, be with me. Lord, be with me. No, 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 no. no. Jesus told us, please the Father, he will always be with you. Amen? Yeah. If you do his will, he will always be with you. And we are taught that we need to fast. We need to pray. I pray, I fast. But that's not what brings God's presence. We pray and fast for God to bless us and all that. That's not what brings God's blessings. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If you take Ephesians chapter 4 and you read it, and like I've been teaching you some prayer, you say, Lord, what can I supply to make your body grow? That would be the most powerful prayer you pray. Holy Spirit, what can I supply? What can I do to make the body work better? Are you hearing me? Lord, what can I do to make the body work better? Before we joined Christ Embassy many years ago, the Lord showed me what I'll be doing. They were struggling with many things I didn't know, but the Lord said, go there. The Lord told me to go there. And as I went there, The first day, I noticed what the problem was. Amen. Amen. And then, the second service, I got up. I went to the sound console. I saw what they were doing. And that particular Sunday, they brought Indians. The Indians came and set up the sound, actually. The Indians came up and set up the sound and said, because Pastor Chris was so frustrated about the sound. So they even got Indians. They came and set up the sound. So that day I went, I got up, I looked at what the Indians did. <laughs> I went, and I don't know where those guys from were from. Then remember that there was um, one of the pastors in Christian Embassy that was an Indian. Yeah, there was one guy that was an Indian, you know. So he connected his people to come and set up the sound. And they set up the sound. And in church, I was looking, I said, this thing cannot work. So when I went to the console, I said to them, this thing will not work. They said it was set up by Indian. I said, even if it's injured, I said it will not work. Amen. It was terrible. I 
had a gift and I have a gift. And that gift was in business. And that business was where the church was having difficulties. Amen. That day I stood up in that service. For many years, I didn't sit down again to enjoy a complete service. For many years. That day I stood up, went to the council. I told them, what you put set up here will not work. <laughs> when pastor wanted to speak, everywhere was feedback. <laughs> I say Indians have dead with us. So after service, I just went to Pastor Mr. I said, I said, TYK, this setup cannot work. She said it was set up by the Indians. I asked her, did it work? I said, look, look, look. I said, let me work on these things. She said, can you? I said, let me work on it. I remember the following day on Monday, all my team, I took them from what I live. We went to church. Ajawa is there. He was among those. Praise the Lord. Everything was a mess. We have to start from the beginning. Even the speakers they bought were fake. Amen. They had PV everywhere. PV everywhere. Talk. There was a speaker called Talk. T-O-R-Q-U-E. Talk. And then Evie. All manner of junk. And Ahuja. They had a huja. I don't know where they should build those things from. When I looked and I saw the mess, I calculated how we can get the best out of the junk. We tried. We tried. We tried. You know why? I've been trained in a different school. Even today, there are pastors that when I speak to, they will say to me, he says, uh, they just call me sometimes. I mean, it, it doesn't happen much now. But those days they will call. Pastor, we are about, I need a speaker for 5,000 people or 7,000 people. Can you come to my church? And, and I say, what is the dimension of your hall? You say, well, dimension is 100 meters or like 20 meters or 50 meters. Or I would just say to them, I said, um, you need to budget about 15, 20 million. They say, what? I said, before I will come, I need to tell you, I've been in this business. Amen? By reason of learning, by reason of learning, I don't need to sit down. With, just give me your dimension. I will tell you what you need. Just give me the program you want to organize. I will give you the number of equipment you need to do. Praise the Lord. If I tell engineer Fela, how much will it cost to cast here? He will just mm, calculate so, so, so amount. That's his job. Amen. He learned about concrete. Even though that makes him too hard now to learn Bible. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> 